All right, APKM, so today um, we are doing, or looking at the procedure for thermodynamics, um, enthalpy of reaction, and Hess's law. So um, if you look on the very front page background, you got three equations, equations one, two, and three, and then right underneath that it says, when equation two is reversed and added to equation one, the result is equation three, um, which is Hess's law. So the sum of reactions equals the total energy change of a reaction. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the delta H for reaction 1. We're going to find the delta H for reaction 2. Um, we're going to subtract 2 from 3 and get a theoretical delta H for reaction 3. But then we're going to measure reaction 3 on our own as well using those chemicals. And then we can co compare um, how close experimentally were we to the actual equation 3 that we got without adding or subtracting them. So it's a Hess's Law Lab. Um, if you look at the procedure, okay, so there are um, five, I think, pre-lab questions, which are kind of on the bottom and then up here. So make sure you do the pre-lab questions. Um, but if you look at the procedure, um, set up a calorimeter um, of two nested styrofoam cups. So I will just put this down here. So I got two nested styrofoam cups. Um, there's actually a magnetic stir bar in there, so we can stir a liquid. Um, so we're stirring it as we are taking a temperature. So, uh, next, measure 50 mils of distilled water into a 50 mil graduated cylinder. And I'm going to stick this in here, and I'm going to go ahead and get this temperature real quick. So I'll start stirring it, and this temperature, it looks like, is um, 21.5 degrees, is what it looks like. 21.6, 21.5, right around there. All right. So... Um, so I put that in data table one, my initial temperature. And then the next thing is over here, I've got some water on a hot plate, okay? So as you look at like the next several steps, um, heat some water to about 70 degrees, measure out 50 mils of this 70 degree water into um, a graduate cylinder. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna record that temperature. So we're gonna know the temperature of our cold water and our hot water to start with. We're gonna combine them, okay? And let me just do this real quick. So I need 50 mils of hot water. Pretty much as precisely as possible. So I'm going to measure out how much I have and get its temperature. So it looks like our initial temperature is going to be about... 67.3 degrees. All right, so here's where it's going to get tricky. So I'm going to put this in here. Um, I need several hands. I'm going to turn on my stir. And essentially, we're going to take the temperature every 20 seconds as soon as they mix. So here we go. Collect. Ideally, something like that. So I have the lid on the top to try to keep as much heat as possible in my calorimeter. And essentially this first step, notice if you look at um, determine the heat capacity of the calorimeter. And real quickly, like if you look at the graph, it's not a surprise. The cold water is getting warmer, the hot water is getting colder. And what should happen if we have 50 degrees of or 50 milliliters of both of them. Um, the temperature should equalize exactly, all right, because the hot water, because we have the same amount, the same mass of water, um, everything that hot water is giving up, that the cold water is absorbing, should be a wash, essentially. But what's going to happen is, is my styrofoam, even though styrofoam is an insulator, it should not absorb any um, heat, um, it still does, or just the air around my um, calorimeter. So this first step is simply to find what the heat capacity of my styrofoam cups or my system is, okay? And it's gonna be basically a correction factor for part two of the lab. So part one of the lab is simply finding what's the heat capacity of my calorimeter, okay? So my styrofoam cups, the cardboard on top, and just the air that's trapped in here. So how much um, heat is being lost to the system or being lost to the surroundings, not the system. Um, and we're gonna find it's the, the heat so there's heat that's lost, okay? Even though styrofoam is an insulator, it's not a perfect insulator. So anyways, that is part one of the lab, okay? So we're gonna stop um, the video now and kind of hop to what would be part two.
All right, so this was the graph of my temperature for um, part one. And essentially what the question is going to ask you to do, like if you look at the lab, it's basically going to say draw a best fit line through that graph. Notice it's not directly linear. There's a little bit of a, like a curve to it. Um, so it's going to ask you to put like a best fit line and find where that would hit the x-axis. And I think that's called team mix maybe. Um, what's going to end up happening is I'm just going to tell you what team, I'm, I will assign a team mix in your data for you. Okay. So, but that's kind of what you would have gotten, kind of that slope that's not exactly linear. So you would do a line of best fit and find where it hits the y-axis. Okay. All right. And then you're going to do calculations based on team mix. So I'm going to go back to my data. And um, I just took temperatures of my HCL, and HCL was about 21.3 degrees, and my NaOH was about 19 degrees. So again, what we're going to do with those two temperatures is we're going to take the average of those initial temperatures to become our initial temperature, okay? Um, they should be pretty close to each other, and that's a little bit further than I would expect because they were both just sitting in the room. Uh, so they should be pretty close to that. I'm not sure why they're two degrees off, but um, I think on the data you'll get, they'll be closer than that. So, similar to last time, um, this really is a fairly lame lab, so you're not missing a whole lot that you're not here. So I'm going to put the, I guess I won't slosh it around when I'm pouring hydrochloric acid. So there's hydrochloric acid. And essentially, same thing I did with the two waters. Um, I'm going to pour this in. Um, I'm going to have my temperature probe in here. And that in there. Pour this one in there. <clears throat> Actually, let's start stirring. All right. Pour. Start collecting data. And again, we're going to collect data for three minutes, I'm recording the temperature every 20 seconds. <clears throat> and we're going to see how exothermic or endothermic our reactions are. All right. So, um, so notice that's the rest of the part two of the uh, whatever, the data. So what's going to end up happening is um, I will kind of direct you to your um, data and um, I'll kind of talk a little bit about the data um, and kind of tell you what parts to skip of the lab, like what calculations to skip and which ones not to skip. All right. But that's pretty much it. So you can see like our temperature, we're up to 32.6. So fairly exothermic when these two things react. Um, again, one was 19 when we started and one was 21.3. Um, so they warm up pretty quickly. So again, I'll record this for another three minutes, um, but you get the gist of what's happening. All right, so um, as far as the lab write-up goes, um, if you have the lab out, and I think it's probably just can stay a PDF for the most part, um, there's these five pre-lab questions, um, and like it says, answer on a separate sheet of paper. So answer these on a separate sheet of paper just so I can see your work fairly easily. Um, here's the procedure. And I basically showed you part one and part two A, reaction one, um, in the video. Um, two and three are really the same thing, so I didn't think I needed to show you that. <clears throat> so as far as data, data tables go, here is your data here on the left-hand side, and here's your kind of your stuff over here on the right. So um, simply, um, hot and cold water are these columns C and D, all right? Um, and then basically down here is where you're going to put your answers. Um, if you can kind of show work kind of around, um, if you want to show work on that piece of paper as well, that's also fine. But I'm basically looking for these values. T mix, I've already done for you, so you don't need to calculate that. Um, like whenever we get down here, <clears throat> notice it asks you to use this graph. Um, in the video, when I kind of pointed out um, like a line of best fit, that's essentially what this graph is asking you to do. Um, it's not really linear here. It kind of, you know, kind of drops off a little bit. So um, you can kind of read what number two is, but all this is doing is calculating this T-mix, which I've already given you. So everybody has a T-mix for part one. 
So that would that number would just go up here, T mix. And then average, you're gonna calculate that. That's just the average, I think, of your hot and your cold. And then really just kind of read through the calculations you're supposed to do. So um, calculate the average initial temperature of the hot and cold water, record this temperature, and then blah, 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 blah. Notice the only time that's kind of weird is um, down here, when you're calculating capital C Cal, or the calorimeter of, um, I'm sorry, the heat capacity of the calorimeter, um, notice T is the initial temperature, temperature of the cool water. So make sure you use the cool water, not the hot water, not the average water, but use the cool water. And then um, T mix is, again, this 40.7 for my data, okay? Um, <clears throat> okay. So whenever you go to part two, again, your answers are gonna go, you know, you have three different reactions, so reaction one, I wanna see your T-mix value, I don't need to see your T-mix, I've given you the T-mix values for each of the parts. So really, you're just calculating Q of reaction, heat of reaction, and delta H, or change in enthalpy of reaction. <clears throat> so, there we go. Um, so if we go down to these calculations, um, pretty much right down here, um, where it says T mix minus initial. So these two temperatures should be fairly close. So for this T initial, you're going to use the average of the two solution temperatures. So for instance, if I looked at Christian and Benji's data, they have 20 or 22 degrees for the hydrochloric, 20.9 for the sodium hydroxide. They would take the average of these two for this T initial. Okay, so it's not cold or hot anymore because we don't have a hot or cold temperature. We just have an initial, but it should be the same temperatures. So I would just take the average of those two. And then the T mix, obviously, I've given to you again. Um, but it basically will tell you how to get Q reaction. And it'll tell you how to get delta H reaction. <clears throat> so you're not really doing the calculations here. Either do them kind of here in the margins or put them on a separate sheet of paper. It doesn't matter to me. And then lastly, if you're doing stuff in the margins, um, where it says answer in the space below, um, just do this probably on the same sheet that you're doing your pre-lab questions. All right, so part three would be the same as pre-lab, unless you just want to do this all on just scratch paper, you know, not on scratch paper, but on line paper. Like a, have a pre-lab section and then have like a, um, a part one and have these answers. So QCAL, CCAL, and then part two, reaction one, um, Q reaction, delta H, reaction two, reaction, Q of reaction, delta H, so on and so forth. So kind of just have it planned out, I mean, kind of have it worked out. Um, like I said, you might use these two pages if you want to write in, this, in, the, in the margins, and then just have a scratch paper with your pre-lab questions in addition to the part three questions. Okay? Um, so if you have questions on that, obviously let me know, um, but that's kind of what I'm looking for as far as the write-up goes.